Marius. It's really nice to meet you and I'm very excited about the sessions that you booked. So I've read through everything that you shared with me and I'm, we're totally going to handle this. We're, <laughs> we're going to make some hardcore improvements on your life, okay? Man, you have a lot of stuff going on. And I want to focus on all the sort of darker demonic stuff. That's probably what I'm going to run into first. But it's, all this is interconnected. So I... I'm just I'm just gonna relax and get tuned in and we're gonna we're just gonna go through what comes first, okay? All right. You're an awesome person and it takes a lot of courage to live the type of life that you're living. So it's gonna get better, okay? It's gonna get a lot better. All right. Well, the first thing is your heart is really, really, it's like pinched tight, but it's more than that. It's like a clamp on it and then twisted. It's really tight, which makes sense why you're having problems with demonic types of beings because they don't want your heart to be open. They need it to be closed. They need it to be shut so that the light doesn't shine through, right? Yeah, you have a lot of closed up chakras, throat is closed, third eye is a bit strange as well. It's It appears to be open, but it's almost like a glass piece over it. There's a like a green light, like a neon green, very faint that shines, it tries to shine through, but then it's, it sort of hits this glass piece and it's muted out and it looks kind of like just a very dim light shining through us. I've never seen anything quite like that before. Not sure why it's like that, but uh, let's keep moving forward, see what we run into. So right now I'm just asked to loosen up your heart, okay? And when I loosen up your heart, I'm also loosening up your third eye. And I'm telling your third eye that there's love here to support you. It's almost like your third eye is there's some sort of military design about it like you're like you're trying to create a a military strategy um in conjunction with the spirit realm okay it's got that vibe to it like it's a like it's a base um and there's all these ideas and talking back and forth with new strategies new ways to keep you safe from the war this psychic warfare kind of thing. But I'm going to clear that all out of your mind too. Because we have to start by saying there's no psychic warfare. Even if you have the memories to prove that, that you literally have been going through this stuff. It's real. The more that you, you put the energy into it being real. The more real it will always be. So when you ignore the reality of it it loses its ability to stick to you, okay? So it takes time. You can't just, it's not going to happen overnight. It takes time. And this energy work is going to help too because I'm going to clear that out of here. Because when it comes to love, you don't need a military strategy. There is no psychic warfare because you're not attached to that kind of pain and suffering because you're only connected with love. And love isn't an attachment. It's just an experience of being true to yourself because deep down inside you are the love of all, you know, and you don't have to, in a way, keep your, your energy safe, keep it protected so it can't be taken. Your love of all can't be taken, period. And you don't have to keep it safe because not a single being in an infinite universe can take yourself away from you. Only you can let yourself be taken. But this is energy we're talking about. It's a complicated experience because when we're human, we're translating our psychic senses in a very unique way in conjunction with, for instance, when I go into a journey state, I, I, it's like I'm, I'm stepping away from hu being human. I'm stepping into my 
more of my soul essence and I feel energy and the energy tells me what's truly happening here outside of my mind's interpretation. So the further I get away, I can still be human because I got to talk through what I see and feel, but it's, it's as if I, I'm not doing it as a human, I'm doing it more as my soul. You'll notice two different experiences when you are at the soul level, the energy level, which is infinite, and then at the human level, which is full of fear and confusion, trying to make sense of. The soul knows because the soul understands the energy. The human doesn't understand the energy. So that's why we get kind of caught up in these knots and these kinds of problems that have no idea how to get ourselves out of it. Because you're so gifted and psychic that... You can't, you, you're not going to get out of these knots using anything related to being human. You're going to have to use your psychic gifts. So learning how to work with energy is going to solve all your problems, okay? It's almost as if you've attracted these problems in order to teach you how to become who and what you could potentially be meant to be, right? On the other side of this, you could be a powerful energy healer to help other people going through the same challenges. So you get yourself out of it by learning about energy and healing. And now you go on to help other people get themselves out of it, okay? I learned how to get myself out of it, so now I can help you. You see, it's a domino effect. It's a really good one. Okay. Yeah, you, you're, I feel a lot of anxiety because me talking about this, there's a lot of um, um, loss of empowerment. Like, I mean, I even feel shaky and uh, vulnerable, nervous, fearful. Um, I'm not sure where my strength lies in conjunction to what's being done to me, so to speak. So as you, you're feeling this way. You're feeling a weakness in your own personal strength, in facing what is being done to you. You don't understand your power. That's why your power can be taken away from you because you don't understand how truly powerful you are. So really those that are taking from you should be, you know, you could be teaching them powerful lessons about love, you know? <laughs> so, all right, let, let's just keep moving forward here. All right, I'm, I'm loosening up your throat a little bit. I want to get into all the chakras, but, the, but mainly it's your heart, your third eye, and then your throat is the loudest when I step into your energy field. The more I talk to you, I'm speaking to your deeper consciousness, um, and that's sending energetic upgrades and downloads and all that stuff, so you can start to feel different. You can start to feel like you received... In information that is changing the way you feel about yourself and your situation, okay? It's not always about what we know up here. It's about how we feel in relation to what we're going through. So we can change our feelings about ourselves and our situation. Everything changes. So I'm just sending a lot of information to the mind, but also to your subconscious or your soul level selves so they can feel transformed. There's so much we're going to discover in this session, so much. This is just the beginning, okay? I just have to tell you all this stuff because your guides, my guides, higher self, everybody's involved here and they need you to know this, okay? <laughs> they need all the parts of you to know this. Okay. So I feel what it's like to be you. I'm very nervous here right now. We're kind of in the same shoes. So we're walking as one through your energy field and you're very nervous, feel very weak. There's a lot that you're afraid to look at inside yourself. One is behind a very tall door, very big door. And the closer we get to this door, I mean, it's almost enough I feel like I could faint. I mean, the, the third eye reactions, the mind reactions, it just, like, I just feel like I could faint. I tell you, we can take a moment here. I'm not going to force you into something that you need just some time to catch up. I want you to explain to me what makes you so uncomfortable that you could faint in conjunction with this door.
It has to do with you facing aspects of yourself. You don't know if you're strong enough to do it. And I say, so you're telling me that these aspects of yourself then would be stronger than you, yourself? Because if it's all simply you, then why are you afraid of yourself? You're thinking right now. You're really very emotional. You really, I, I'm just giving you lots of hugs because this is very, very hard for you. And it feels like there's echoes of things that you've done in other lives that that may not even make sense to a human being, but they traumatize aspects of, because our conscious mind doesn't always know what's going on beneath the surface, but everything beneath the surface knows everything. It knows all the lifetimes. It knows even what's going to happen um, in the near future kind of thing. Like we're always sensing everything out. And so these, these aspects of you know about these other lifetimes. And in a way, they're keeping your mind safe by not like letting you know about it. Otherwise, it could jeopardize your very life. You see, so I you know you were mentioning about ego. And ego is, it's not, it's like everybody thinks ego is, you know, like obsessed with being, you know, I'm obsessed with myself. I'm awesome. You know, I need attention. Love me. You know, everybody love me. Everybody see me. That's, that's just one little side of ego. Ego is also survival mechanism. Okay. So your ego is wise. And when you tell your ego that it's wise, it will be your friend. If you tell your ego that it sucks, I hate you, I want you to go away, it will fight you. <laughs> so tell ego what it wants to hear and it will work in your favor. <laughs> it's a weird relationship. But ego is wise, okay, in its own way. Its own personality, its own way. And ego knows what's going on and the levels that it's not going to let you know consciously. And it's doing it to protect you based on what it thinks is the smartest way to keep you alive. Because ego is about survival, okay? Ego is always in the way when you're on a psychic development journey, spiritual enlightenment. Ego is the one thing you're gonna have to battle the entire time because it's gonna constantly find other manipulative ways to kind of be a block in your road. And you have to work through it, work through the next thing, work through the next thing, work through the next thing. And that's just the way it is. But ego is doing you a kindness. And so you're sensing out deep down inside um, what's on the other side of the door is, is memories, okay? You could call them past life memories that your ego knows about, that it's hiding from you. But now that we are here to face it, ego can't hide it anymore. And now you're starting to feel the awareness of why ego was hiding it in the first place. <sighs> These don't feel like human lives, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of sensitivity about what we're moving towards inside yourself. So we're going to be thankful that ego did everything that it did. Because ego is always trying to do its best, okay? So we give, I'm just giving your ego, I'm just, I see your ego as an energy body standing here. I give your ego a hug and say thank you for everything that you're doing. It's time now, you know it's time now, ego, we're going to face this. And you know what, ego, it's not about just you. It's about all the chakras. So I'm, I'm illuminating every single one of your chakras from crown down to root. And what I'm doing is I'm giving them each an eye that is open. So every single one of your chakras has an open eye in order to see. And we're all going to work together. Root, sacral, solar plexus, heart, throat, third eye, crown. We're going to all work together. So it's not just ego's burden. We're all going to work together and we're going to move through the doorway so we can reconcile this stuff. You've actually been punishing yourself in a way. 
this is so hard for you to look at that you would rather go through psychic attack and all this other hell before you would ever look at this. It's easier to go through that than to actually go through this doorway. Your third eye is... It, that whatever is here is starting to break down. There's a lot going on in your energy field. But I'm gonna I'm just gonna continue to let this do its thing, letting the energy circulate, letting the chakras continue to feel as though their eye is open, the light is shining from within. We are going to move forward towards this doorway. I'm giving you energy and time to um, feel safe, to know that you're safe, that you're being guided, that you're not doing this alone. Continuing to send love to ego and thank ego for all it's done. And as I'm doing all this, there's other areas of your energy field revealing themselves, okay? So other things to work on, all right? So I'm going to have to feel it all out to decide, um, you know, I want to move forward, but sometimes I need to go over here before I can go forward because there's other things that we need to do first kind of thing. So I'm just going to wait a minute, sending the love, doing all that stuff, and just feeling things out. Yeah, there's a lot in the way of of actually reaching this door. And they want me to sh tell you this. Um, it's sort of like I see this scene where we're all standing in, in a circle, okay? Now over here, it's kind of like if you have the number five in dots, usually people put like, you know, it kind of creates a square of, of like a dot on each and, and then a dot in the center. So there's a there's a circle in the center, a really big circle in the center. Then there's a smaller circle um, at what would be the corners of a square if the circle was inside of a square. Uh, so each of these four circles, there's information inside of each four of the four circles. And there's something about the energy of where we are at and getting to this door, there's a major energetic barrier going on here. And it's, it has to do with these other four circular spaces. So I'm just going to wait a minute. Boy, this is interesting. All right. This has to do with your throat and your solar plexus, but I'm, a, I'm supposed to just merge all this information together into one sphere. That includes the doorway we're walking through. That includes the energetic barrier. That includes all these four circles into the one big circle in the center. It includes everything. We're just going to put it all into this sphere here. And I'm going to set this sphere of information over here on the side. And I'm going to open things up to the next thing that we need to do. And we'll come back to this if, if we need to. It might reconcile itself as we move forward. So let's keep moving forward. Everything's pitch black. Not as stressful, believe it or not, but there's stress here, but there's not anxiety. I don't feel like I'm going to faint. I don't feel that kind of weakness. I don't feel like the power's been taken from me. There's stress here, but this is copable stress. Everything's just pitch black around me and it's uh, got kind of a liquidy texture to it. Almost like rotten leaves, rotten seaweed and the strands of kind of, it's got like a, it's, it, I experience it as rancid and something having to do with plants. Just, and it's lots and it's, it's long, like long strands, like 50 feet long strands all kind of t accumulated together and it all is black everywhere. Yeah, there's so many spaces inside of yourself. This is just yet another one. What does it mean? 
I don't know, but this is what the energetic balance of it is like. I'm planting a seed of light in the center of it. I'm actually opening up the energetic ground and planting a seed of light. And then I'm just closing this ground up. Mm, I'm starting to get it. I'm going to go and I'm going to plant a seed of light. I'm going back in time. And then I'm going to plant a seed of light into the four corners. And I'm going to plant a seed of light into the center of the larger circle. I'm starting to notice that you have this r ridiculously thick and dense energetic barrier that goes all the way around you. This is almost like letting yourself live inside of a fist. So again, it's snuffing all the light out. It's not allowing you to have access to the light. You need that. You need it. Because it's your truth, you know? And it's interesting because you have a weird relationship with military strategy. It keeps coming up this frequency um, of having to outsmart the war, the psychic attack war, um, something of this kind. Um, and when I plant these seeds of light, an aspect of you um, says, yes, these are bombs that are going to detonate. And I say, no, they're not bombs. And they're not going to blow anything up. And we don't need to blow up this energy barrier. We just need to transform it with love. So you see how I'm planting more than just seeds here. I'm changing your programming, your energetic programming from kind of uh, the war strategy to peacefulness, transformation with love, neutrality, okay? You're more powerful being neutral. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you're neutral, nothing sticks to you. <laughs> nothing. And you can just stand in front of stuff, consciousness, parasites, beings, and they can react. And you just stand there and they can't do anything to you. Because you're totally neutral. Neutral is the most powerful energy when it comes to nothing can do anything to you when you're neutral. <laughs> it's amazing. It's like the ultimate white flag. It's not surrender. It's just neutrality. So I'm really sending out neutral vibes throughout your energy field. And I am dissolving the program. These seeds are not bombs. We're not blowing anything up. We're transforming. We are transforming things with love. You, you really need to know more information. More information. And, and I just say, well, all we know is the energetic. This is all energy. And this is how I translate the way that energy makes me feel. And it comes to me in pictures and feelings and information like this. And when I talk about it, I'm also transforming energy and reprogramming you. And I'm telling you that if I'm meant to tell you more information, I will have more information. So for right now, let's just keep moving through what we know. And what I'm being shown. Because you, I can tell you're like, I'm ready to be free. <laughs> One step at a time, one step at a time. It takes a long time to get to this level of chaos. So it takes time to undo it, you know, but we're going to get there. You're going to learn a lot in the process. You're going to become super empowered. You're going to be transformed to a totally new person, but it takes time, you know. I mean, it is impressive what you got going on here. <sighs> Feeling out this like a ridiculously dense layer around you where I've planted these seeds into parts of it. Okay. I want to know what's on the other side of the door just as much as you. See, I'm, you're starting to get like, I want to know instead of I'm afraid of it. You're actually wanting to know, but they're saying not yet. Okay, I'm starting to see something disturbing here. It's it's almost like it ha it sounds like it has bones and it's in two big hands and it's being like um, broken into two pieces, and then it's like the flesh is ripped a bit and there's this purple um, 
jiggly stuff that comes out. And I can hear the snap of bones. And then this purple jiggly stuff comes out. Oh man, there's so much going on in here. This has to do with your sacral chakra. This has to do with the back of your head. This is energy circulating around your ears. This has to do with you being controlled by other energy. You being eaten alive, snapped in half, eaten alive, consumed. There's some dark beings about this, but they're not that. They're not, I mean... They're pretty easy to get them to do, to disconnect from you. They just need somebody to feed off of. So if you're willing, then they'll feed off of you. But see, you don't understand how energy works in that way. That you could, you could change or alter your energetic balance so you're not sending out the signal that says, eat me. <laughs> They're just doing what you're asking them to do. Your energy field is asking them to do this. <laughs> okay. So again, here's another another thing that we're we're just gonna alter this frequency. There's no there's no we're not gonna think less of them, okay? And we're not gonna put them down, we're not gonna hate their guts or anything. They just heard your your frequency and they said, okay, there's food. So they're not, they're only just following their own intuitions. So I'm just sending lots of love into them. There's like three of them and they look kind of vampire-ish, okay? So I'm just sending love into them. Oh man, you are really tied up, bound up, wound up. Like you're, I mean, wow. <laughs> okay, Let's just keep moving through. See, this is still me just, I mean, this is still just scraping the surface here. It's like you're in the ultimate meatball and it's hard as a rock. It's like a planetary energy that you're, you're like stuck inside of a very complicated super knot that's like a, a big spherical space around you. And I'm just like with my hand digging down through this, but we're making progress because I'm about, I'm going to crack this. I will crack this. I am determined to crack this by the end of the session. But I'm gonna, there's just all kinds of weird tunnels with a totally different vibration to them than what's over here. And then a different vibration over here. And then this is different. And so, but it's all interconnected. Okay, so I'm just, I'm literally just sending energy waves out. I'm just standing in a dark space where you're kind of being fed off of um, just changing the frequency patterns here. I'll, I mean, just take a bunch of random garbage and then um, compress it all together. And it's like I'm in yet another pocket in this massive energy space that is you're, you're inside of an energetic fist. And you created this. That it's impressive. It's amazing. Okay, this is going to get a little bit more uncomfortable because there's a lot of stuff that's sort of like creepy crawly feeling um on my back, like um gross like spider-like things. There's a thing behind me as well. I mean, there's density to this. There's actual ability to feel this. But I'm showing you neutrality. It can want you to feel it all day long. Neutral, neutrality, just go neutral. Okay, cool, so you're on my back, you're a gross spider. Okay, what else? You're a creepy monster thing behind me. Okay, cool, so what else? I should be afraid of you. I should be running away, screaming. 
You know what? You need love just as much as the next person. What's interesting is I'm trying to turn around to see, but I'm frozen stuck. Like, I'm forced to just stand here, just stuck. And everything that I experience is a reflection of you. But we are in the same shoes. So I'm reprogramming your energy field as you are showing me things in your energy field. I say you're stronger than this and you're not stuck and nobody has the power to force you into a position where you can't move. And I show you, you can do this. You can do this. Just choose to move your legs, move your hands, move your arms. You're in control of your body, my body, my legs, my hands, my arms. No, this is my essence. This is me. I am in control of me. And you have to be confident when you say that. You have to know that's the truth. That nobody has access to you unless you give it to them. And that's giving yourself away. But once you know that you own yourself, and nobody can own you unless you give yourself away, right? You own yourself. You're in control of yourself. So they can intimidate you or in inspire you to think that you aren't in control of yourself. But you're going to own it, right? You're going to bring all the parts of yourself back to yourself don't need to give yourself away anymore, so let's just do that. And there's parts of you behind you, so I'm just bringing you into the now, okay? Bringing you into the now. Okay, some dark stuff coming. Just continuing to bring all the aspects of you in different timelines, different places, different densities, dimensions. Just bringing you back to yourself in the now. Helping you to continue to feel neutral. Everybody has a right to their opinion, to their inspirations. You have a right to yours. And you just simply stand your ground. In the human world, yeah, human beings take advantage of other human beings all the time. You can, they can try to do it in the energy world. And they can be successful if you don't know that nobody can do that in the energy world. Nobody can take anything from you in the energy world unless you give it away. But in the human world, yeah, people can take you. They can rope you up. They can do things to you. But in the energy world, they can't. Unless you believe that they can. Once you believe they can, they can do all that stuff. Okay? So don't believe that they can do anything. And then they can't do anything because the truth is they can't. In the energy world, they can't do anything. So when you die and go to heaven, so to speak. I know you were talking about you want to make sure there aren't, you aren't stopped by demonic beings. You, they can't stop you. That is a, that is a misconception. That is not true. So there's information out there that says that, you know, there's these alien beings that will capture your soul and send you back to Earth, and Earth is just a harvesting place, and on and on and on. That is people with psychic ability using their human mind to understand the energy world. That is not psychic people actually going into the energy world and using their soul to comprehend the energy world and then providing that information for the human race. So there's a lot of misconception out there about the truth of the power of the soul. And your soul is powerful. Demons are basically, is this is a demon, okay? It's like um, a demon is a broken house. So would you, would you see a broken house as more powerful, more influential than a, a house with a strong foundation, a strong build, light glowing from the inside? What one would you prefer? Which one do you think is stronger to withstand reality? The demonic broken house or the strong house full of light and love? Demons have no power. Their power comes from brokenness. So if you feel that you aren't powerful, that you aren't a strong house with the light from the inside, because you are, you are that. All this other stuff is manipulation that you believed. And that's okay. We're all, we're all working on this. We're all conquering this. That's why it's so important that you learn this stuff so you can get the truth out there. Just like, like I'm trying to get the truth out there myself. <laughs> People are ready for it or they're not, you know? So, there isn't a single demonic being or alien being 
that is going to prevent you from going where you want to go when you're ready to move on from this life. And you need to say that out loud. You need to say, there is not a demonic being or alien being, any being in the infinite universe that can ever guide me away from where I want to go when I'm ready to move on from this life. You hear yourself say that out loud, you will feel your heart shifting and moving in a very positive direction with the light starting to glow from the inside because you are speaking the truth. When you speak the truth, you can tell because you'll feel it in your heart. But when you speak from fear, you'll feel clenched up. You'll feel disconnected. You'll feel confused. So just let it go, okay? It takes time. It takes time. Especially after everything you've been through. It takes time, okay? So. So I'm bringing all the parts back. Um, these spiders, that creepy being, there's an emanation of respect. And it's almost like part of their role is to challenge you to know your true power. This isn't the first time I've come across this. I've come across spirit guides that are absolutely terrifying in order to challenge you to know your true power to stand your ground. And then once you, I, I help souls and people do this, that spirit guide transforms into some extraordinary angel, bows with the utmost respect and pure love, and then transitions because you don't need that guide anymore because you've learned the lesson and now you're moving on to new guides. So this is sort of like an emanation of a guide that is challenging you. You're already challenged enough, right? Why do you need more challenge? Trust in your higher self. This is exactly the way it needs to be. It's perfect. It's perfect just like this. So there's respect for you. And there's a just, it just feels like it's diminishing and disappearing. So it's, it's not a connection to you anymore. There's zero relationship with you and that energy. There's so much more. This is a super amazing session. I mean, this is a really great start. There's still more we're going to discover, okay? <sighs> okay. All right, has to do with your sacral chakra. Every, I'm still connected to everything we've seen. So I'm still sending love into everything that we've seen thus far. I want to just see what the sacral chakra is about. Has, it's a divine feminine energy. And there's something beautiful here, actually. It's like a magical fairy world with glowing, um, like, mushrooms and flowers and things. And it's like a nighttime, but a world that glows in the dark. It's very divine feminine and fairy-like energy. It's really beautiful. Yeah, okay. Man, you have so many compartments of different information and we're going to, I'm breaking the walls down on as many of these as I can. And we're going to just start working with oneness. We're just going to start putting it all into one pot and we're going to mix it all up. And then we're going to just keep stirring in the oneness, keep stirring in the love until it's the best soup of all time. Okay. It's awesome. It's going to start out looking gross and messy and disgusting and rotten. And I don't want to eat that, but you just keep stirring it up, stirring it up. Stirring in the love, stirring in the oneness, and let it all start to work together to see each other's faces. The hardships and the beautiful things inside yourself need to meet and greet each other. There should be no separation. There needs to be a working together. Again, I'm going to go back to your chakras with the eyes and just continue to illuminate them and help them to feel that it is safe to see. And it is safe to feel the light within. And it is safe to work together. And Ego, thank you so much for all that you're doing. You're doing such a good job. Thank you so much. We need to keep working with love. You're not alone, Ego. We got all these other chakras. They want to help too. So let's work together. <sighs> See how you talk to Ego? 
ego can get carried away and then it has to be at the, like, it has to drive the ship. But then it feels burdened, it feels exhausted, it feels angry. Why is it always me all the time? And that you have to remind ego that it's doing the best that it can. But remember, there's other chakras, other energy bodies that are also wise, as wise as you. Um, you see how you work with ego? And then ego starts to step back and say, thank you. I kind of needed a break. I kind of needed some help. And I just didn't want anybody else to help me or something. Like, <laughs> it gets kind of lost in its own, like, drive. So. Okay. There's a reason why we're not going to that door yet. It's almost like we have to prepare your energy field for whatever's on the other side. I will say that the distance between where we are standing and the door um, is is lighter. Like, it's easier. We could move through this. It's, like, airier, okay? Whereas before, it'd be like trying to walk through a wall. Like, it's too dense. Energy's too dense. It's feeling like we can move forward. But I'm going to continue to be open to what else do we need to know? What else do we need to clear before we reach the door? I ask you if you believe in yourself. I say, I believe in you, but it's not up to me. Me believing in you that's my thing. You have to believe in you. That's where the true power comes from. So I'm supposed to tell you that that beautiful fairy place, um, I've interconnected with all these other spaces that have a challenge. Because they need to breathe in the beauty that exists within you. And that space is powerful. It's infinite love. And nothing can desecrate it. Nothing can. And it has the power to transform all of this stuff with the love inside of itself. Because it's that powerful. It's that beautiful. It's that natural. It's that loving. That's the part that we add to the soup that changes everything. Okay? Okay. Okay, hold on. This is good. This is something new. This is anger coming from deep down. Like, it's coming from, like, deeper than the root somehow, but it's coming up through the root in the sacral chakra. It's just a lot of pent-up anger. And it's, it's angry because it's like, it doesn't want to be a slave. It doesn't want to be abused anymore it doesn't want to be taken advantage of it wants to be its own body its own form its own direction not to be controlled <sighs> that's coming from deeper than your root i mean that's that's deep huh that's a deep one <sighs> okay back side of your sacral chakra Backside of your solar of your solar plexus, backside of your heart, backside of your throat, backside of your third eye. All right, something pretty dark about this. Hmm, something you don't want to see about yourself. That's why it's on the backside. Hmm. Starting to go from dark to softer and silkier. Again, it's got a divine feminine feel to it. And it's some kind of serpent. Why don't you want to see this? I mean, this is straight up along the spine. It's like got a lot to do with your spine. It 
This is a, there's a lot to be said here about this. I asked the snake, I say, how come you felt so dark? Now you're feeling just very beautiful. Why, why are you, why are you on the back side? And she shows me that there's a lot of dark things behind you, but it's not her. It's just to reach her, I'm tuning into this all this dark stuff behind you. And she's showing me it. Ask her if she has any suggestions on how we could help you let go of that. And I'm showing her this ma massive energetic, like, in the fist. Everything that I've seen thus far. I want to crack the shell. We have a doorway that I want to see what's on the other side of, if we can understand some more of that. She's really happy to hear all these things because she knows that how much, like, you need love and support. She says this. I mean, she's very loving. She reminds me of that a fairy world, but she's not fairy of fairy energy. She's divine, feminine, very loving, beautiful, silky kind of energy, as a loving serpent energy. It's like you keep trying to move forward in your life um, by put, trying to put things behind you, but you don't reconcile it. So when you put it behind you, it just stays there like a big closet and you just keep walking forward with all this stuff that's not reconciled attached to you on the back side you have some very loving friends in the energy world I simply needed you to know that I simply that's just simply something you need to be aware of we've got sessions to work on all this stuff so I don't feel like that. I need to just let you know that for right now. Because there's a lot. There is that that you don't just get just take that out of there. Like that is a lot of going on back there, okay? All right, let me see if I can get to this door. See if that's even something we need to do now. Yeah, you don't feel the anxiety, you don't feel weak. I ask you if you feel strong in yourself. If you feel strong in your own shoes. I see that you're, there's beings on either side of you and they have odd um, tools that go around your ankles and they, they pull your legs. Like, so you fall, but you're falling in the splits. This, uh, she's, uh, the serpent is, woman is still with us. She's, uh, just, she's literally like a beautiful green snake. Um, but I see her sort of um, turning to a white light and she's very feminine. And it's almost like her body's made out of white um, flower petals. Like she's a flower herself. And she touches you kind of on one of your temples and tells you, She's saying something, and it comes out in images of water. Healthy, pure, flowing water. And she's sending this into your mind. And she's asking you to purify yourself. 
as in she shows you images of the water flowing through your veins and through your chakras and through your etheric body, your physical body, um, your soul. Like this is energy water. It's purifying energy water. And to allow this energy water to flow into the back side of you. Even if we're not directly looking into it, we're just going to let this water flow and absorb into it. And that it can reach um, everything that's back there like a sponge soaking up the water. Still some complicated things here. Because uh, as this purification energy, I'm feeling this flowing through you. There is a sexual connection between you and her. But it feels stronger from her towards you. And it's confusing me because you're kind of... It's like you're kind of shut down in a way. It's almost like you're holding your breath and you're numb. But she isn't. And there is like an intimacy moment going on here. It's strange because this is overlapping an image where you're in the splits. And there's men, there's very odd men on either side with strange poles and then kind of shackles around your ankles that just do that and they're still standing here. And we're in front of this large doorway. It's, it's something about this sexual energy, but she's really pure. It's like a kundalini thing. I mean, she's coming from, even her face is turning to starlight. And she's trying to revive your sacral chakra. I mean, her energy is pure. There's nothing dirty about it at all. I mean, she... She's doing this out of her own accord. She's not a spirit guide. She's not a guide. She's just a soulmate, friend, somebody trying to help you. But it's not about, it's not like on the human level of what we see, sexuality. This is, um, it's like a kundalini um, gift for your sacral chakra. It's just, I'm seeing it in images like two human beings making love kind of thing. But she's showing me that she's filling your sacral chakra with light and like a kundalini type energy. And this is also helping to transmute this dark stuff. And it feels like you have access to your legs again and you're not in the splits. And I see her energy just turn to pure starlight and then it goes into your heart, but I also see her glowing within your third eye. And she's, it's like she's saying she comes from the stars and she's, she's wanting to guide, help guide your path, but she does not feel like a spirit guide. Like she feels like a soulmate or somebody who cares about you very much. She doesn't feel spirit even. She feels more... Um, I don't want to call her lower dimensional. <laughs> I mean, there's there's really high dimensions, you know, that's like pure light. But when you're in an incarnate state, you can be um, incarnated in the eighth dimension, so to speak. Like, and that could feel physical and that could feel even alien or extraterrestrial. Um, but you could be even incarnated at the fifth dimension. Like, she feels like a... She's just a very loving, enlightened, and aware being, okay? And she's revealing herself in these different ways to help you with this healing uh, process. But she shows this, her light in your third eye to create like a lighthouse to help you guide your path. But it's about self-love when it comes to illuminating your solar or your sacral chakra. It's bringing the love back into yourself circulating the love around and it's opening up your heart and it's helping you to feel the light within there are no burdens there are no barriers 
see you standing up now and there's nobody here. You look re renewed, reborn. What's interesting is we're rewriting the past. So this doorway no longer has any relationship with anything that was traumatizing or too hard for your ego or your collective inner selves to process as a human being. So the meaning, you're vibrationally shifting your identity, which is shifting timelines and everything. So this doorway is actually em emanating love. But you have to feel worthy of it now. You have to feel like you are worthy of this love. You can't want it. We all want love. But to truly receive it, you have to feel worthy of it and even feel vulnerable to it. Let it cleanse your shame. Let it cleanse your um, self-persecution. Like There's so many ways that we are always, like that we harm ourselves without even realizing it. And we carry a lot of really intense emotions that that kind of separate us from letting just love flow in so be vulnerable be weak to this love not to fear don't be weak to fear it's much better to be weak to love because that's you exposing yourself to love that's us just breaking this down this fist thing that you're inside of it's us dissolving it all we don't have to crack the shell because we can just transmute it with love. Let's see if you're ready yet for this doorway. This has everything to do with your heart. I mean, your heart, when I first came in, was just like wrenched shut, tight, squished, closed, pinched. And it's, it's feeling unwound. It's feeling breathable. It's feeling accessible. Your next step on your journey is to go through a doorway of love. And to know that is, you are worthy of it. And to allow that love in. If you're going to allow demons in... You allow the love in, right? Because the love is the only thing you need to hear. It's the only thing you need to work with. It's the only energy that you need to be putting energy into. It's the only energy you need to be receiving energy from. Love. Anything else doesn't matter. Neutral. Neutral to it. Because if it's not love, then it doesn't deserve your time. You don't even need to be in pain. It doesn't even deserve your pain. It doesn't deserve anything. If it wants you to be in pain, it doesn't deserve your pain. So don't pay attention to it. It's just ignore the bully. It works. In the energy world, this works. And the bully does go away. And oftentimes, we wind ourselves up in these situations because we're afraid of love. And I know it's hard to believe that anybody could ever be afraid of love, but... Love exposes you to yourself. And when you feel love exposing you to yourself, you wouldn't believe the way it can feel. It makes you feel angry. makes you feel like love left you. makes you feel like love abandoned you. It makes you feel so angry and it makes you feel embarrassed. It makes you feel like you can't look love in the eyes. I mean, it makes you feel so many ways you never thought love could ever make you feel. That's the type of love you need to surrender to. That's the type of challenge you need to in welcome into your life. The challenge of surrendering to love and letting love expose every aspect of you that makes you feel vulnerable in ways you never thought you could feel vulnerable. You're thinking, as you think, you're releasing some weird, like, grayish colored jello looking, like it's like a, a pudding. 
It's just, it's just, literally, it's just squishing out of your whole body, everywhere, it's just squishing out. <laughs> You felt like you had a responsibility to the pain and the suffering and the chaos that you still had work to do when it comes to the those roles or those experiences. You want it to be as simple as you could just choose love. That's when you say, so I'm going to believe it is that simple. And you have to relentlessly stand by that each and every day. Because it's the truth. And if you say it is simple to let love in, you're going to change your life. You're going to allow love in now. And whenever you feel something else is bothering you, say it is that simple to let love in. Every single time. And just focus on letting love in. Allowing yourself to feel the love inside yourself. All those other darker feelings and energies and all that stuff is going to fade the more that you stand your ground with what is true about love. is the only thing that's real. All this other stuff is just distractions. You are so worthy of love. Something is becoming aware inside yourself that you don't need a doorway to open up because the door is already in here and it is opening up inside yourself. And it's, it's heaven. It's your, it's your galactic home. It's your astral family. It's your, it's like all the, the love of the whole universe. It's the gateway to all of the love of the whole universe, and it's with you. It's with you. You're starting to glow with light from your head to your toe, your toe to your head, like, and above and around you, like, you have this glowing aura of, of pure light that's coming from inside and then glowing out. And you say, I don't want to be alone anymore. And I give you a hug and I say, you're not alone. And deep down inside, you know that is true. And the more you bring yourself back into this now moment and choose to feel the love inside yourself, you are living in your truth without distraction. And within you is a gateway to your soul family, astral family, I mean, to literally every aspect of love. So many beings that are helping you. So many loving beings. I mean, just that beautiful serpent woman who turns into like a white flower. She was so loving. And she wanted to help you without anything in return. She just simply wanted to help you in that fairy realm was magical it was pure healing energy pure magical love healing energy divine feminine creation energy helping to illuminate your path when it feels dark with all these glowing flowers and mushrooms and glowing living things it was so neat Okay, that's what I <laughs> that's what I got. That was pretty powerful. So this uh, type of sixty minute session is powerful. It's a lot of energetic transformation, especially when it's your first session. 
with everything that you've been through, it, I mean, you could have all kinds of responses to this. This, I mean, you usually the first three to five days, they could be very, you could feel very tired because your body's digesting a lot of energy. It's transforming. It's doing a lot of work. So you could feel tired and you could feel emotional. You could have some different types of dreams. You could feel angry. You could feel scared. I mean, it could, it could, it's kicking up and changing you. It's rebuilding you. Okay. So you could feel all different ways as that has, is taking place because this isn't just a 60 minute session. It's, it's a session that lasts for weeks. Okay. So you could still feel the after, like, um, the after waves of energy, even three weeks from now, which is pretty cool. <laughs> kind of like a gong so it just vibrates and it just keeps vibrating and once it's like you become adjusted to the the energetic transformations that's when everything feels like if it kind of comes back to an a sense of normal but you will feel different you'll see with a new pair of eyes okay i'm so glad that you connected with me it's a real pleasure to meet you and to help you and and I'm looking forward to the next session, okay? So don't be shy. You can pre-book them all um, and get on my calendar. So, okay, have a beautiful day.